you can be the destroyer. That's up to you. Very quick 
transition. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Now I heard the Black Adam was here. That was some cool shit. Wow, I missed it. Bro. <laughs> What's up, Paul H? Like Black Adam. I mean, I forget that kind of stuff. I'm not. We'll have to bring you into the the, the movie set. <laughs> you in. Exactly. So this character for you in this story has been such a passion project for over ten years. Can you tell us about the journey getting here and what it means to be here in Hall H? at San Diego Comic-Con with Black Adam. Again, yeah, thank you. And great job, by the way. Tiffany, this is a hard job. She's doing a great job, right, guys? Yeah. Good, 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 good I'm good so job. happy to do it. Good job. Um, the journey for Black Adam, uh, as many of you know, it has been a long journey, one that has been um, fueled with passion, with, um, with commitment, with grit to push Black Adam along. It's been easily over 10 years. Um, as John and I worked together oh, pro probably almost for five years now um, on Black Adam. So the journey has been uh, an incredible one. And I gotta tell you guys this, you know, I, as many of you know, I, I love coming to Comic-Con and for me it's always, oh, I'm gonna go home to Comic-Con. But to be here at Comic-Con Hall H representing DC, a DC superhero, a DC anti-hero, very specifically representing Black Adam, is truly a dream come true because the dream, when I first started in this business 20 something years ago, many moons ago, um, I would come here and I would bring movies here and you would come here and you think, well, I, I hope people like it, maybe, maybe not. And my dream and Seven Bucks as well, uh, Seven Bucks Productions was to always come here. So to be here today, uh, to watch Black Adam levitate and throw around lightning like he was passing out candy, I gotta tell you guys, uh, this truly is a dream come true. So thank you so much for this kind of love and support. I tried, I tried making the whole room light up, I tried to listen. Well, I, I got the Terramana tequila for everybody. We're going to light this room up. <laughs> 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 okay. So, Jama, not only have you worked with Dwayne Jones on this one, but you've worked with, with him in um, past projects. Um, he's been dreaming about this project for years. What is it like being on board, and what is it about Black Adam that you were like, yes, this is the story that I want to tell Dwayne? Yeah, so we worked on Jungle Cruise together. It was, uh, so it was towards the end, I was working together in Jungle Cruise that he approached me to come into this project. I knew that this was a huge passion and he had been hyping this project for many, many years. So it's obviously a huge, huge pressure. Um, but what attracted me the most was uh, obviously working with DJ one more time. Um, but also the character of Black Adam, he has a very unconventional origin story. Um, he was a slave 5,000 years ago who was given godlike powers. And in our movie, he basically awakens in modern times. And that's something that we, you know, it's unusual. And uh, I was very challenged by the character. Uh, I like movies with characters that operate in the gray area. Uh, with a, their own sense of justice and morality, and I think we talked earlier about, uh, you know, that this seemed to be like a movie in the 70s, like a Dirty Harry type of character, in which, you know, when the system is broken and is, the system is corrupt and not able to protect the, the innocent, sometimes you need somebody that breaks the system down and does the unconventional thing for the, the people. And, and I gravitated towards that. Also, there's a lot of heart in the movie, there's a sense of family in the movie, and I, I, I know that those are things that DJ values very much. Um, and as a filmmaker especially, it's a challenge, you know? This is, uh, this, uh, movies are very challenging, and you kind of have to always outdo the last, or do something fresh, and, but also at the same time, the technology is advancing, and taking advantage of working with the best crew in the world, to do things that have never been done before, and uh, DJ pushing us every day to just do it differently, just do it better. We want to do things in a way that, um, you know, we blow people's minds, and hopefully that's what we've done.
I, yeah, yeah, the chemistry does work. Thank you for saying that. We do have great chemistry. And I do want to say this about Jalman. As, as you guys can tell by his demeanor, he's really humble, shy. very shy. This is killing him right now. <laughs> but killing him. But I will say that on, on, on Jungle Cruise, and you know, Jalman had been on our radar at Seven Bucks for some time, for years. He also comes from a, um, a highly regarded cadre of Spanish filmmakers. Who, who really deliver quality. And when we made Jungle Cruise, the, the, the experience was great. But when it came to Black Adam, the idea was, well, how can we create something uh, that is fresh, unique, maybe a movie that, and this is hard, and it's ambitious, but show, show and create things that have never been done. But also, if our goal, and my goal, Seven Bucks goal, and the studio's goal too as well, and our goal is to usher in a new era of the DC universe, what does that mean? And what does that character mean? And then what does it mean to, um, what does it mean to build out the DC universe with the Justice Society uh, as well too? So, yeah. So, Jalma is really, he's not only prolific, but also he's just the perfect director for this. I, I cannot wait for you guys to see the movie. Woo! Thank you. Characters in introducing the Justice Society. Aldis playing a total fan favorite, Hawkman. I love it. <laughs> what is it like for you bringing that character to the big screen? Oh man, the savage, the beast, the awesome <laughs> warrior. Man, this is such an honor and a privilege, and one of those career lifelong dreams for me. It's amazing just because of who Hawkman is, who Carter Hall is, what Carter's been through. To be with the JSA, I'm talking about the very first unified superhero team in existence, JSA. We started this. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, it's really fantastic. And for me, uh, like I said, I am a fan. You know, I grew up on this, so I, I take it as a, a humble responsibility. I love this world so much. Love energy. I love what it is because it helps me go and just believe in creation, go believe in the imagination. When I see fantastic films like this, when I see what we did with this, what this man did, what this man did, with what this film is, it's a completely different experience for me. So I take it as just an amazing gift that I just want to cherish and take care of and hopefully shepherd into its next iteration after iteration after iteration. Um, I, I will say I probably almost lost this job because DJ called me <laughs> to let me know that I had the job. I did not believe it was him. <laughs> so I almost hung up on him. <laughs> I, yeah. He told me to F off. <laughs> True story. Oh, it's all the series. Like, who's this? I was like, this so, is Wayne Johnson. Little backstory to that, though. I did have somebody playing on my phone at the time. Somebody was hacking my stuff. You know, getting this. They would always call me. That's tell me the that, story yeah. you're saying now. No, they, they would were... call me and tell me that they were these famous people. Like, hey, man, DJ, da, 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 you know, hey, man. I'm like, no, it's not you. Yeah, man. Uh, so I want to talk to you about something. Then when I realized it was him, I thought he was calling to tell me I didn't get the job. I was like, oh, I, I don't know what this is. I know, oh, yeah, hey man, you know, I uh, saw your tape, it was great, but uh, you know, hey man, next time, okay, cool, gotcha. But he said, welcome to Black Adam, my brain exploded, so brother, that was one of the best moments of my entire career. Speaking of more epic moments, Noah playing Adam Smasher, which I will intro you doing that anytime. I think you have a fan out there. I think, I think somebody. It's He's got some fans out there, and of course, Adam Smasher has some fans. What is it like for you bringing this character to the screen, and what can you tell everybody about it without spoiling or revealing too much? Because obviously, someone's here. I'll stop. I blew my mind. The, the opportunity to be a part of this universe and, and uh, a resurgence of, of this and, and Dwayne's and Jama's creations. And I can't tell you how excited I was uh, just to meet with you, Jama. Actually, the first meeting was um, two and a half years ago, and uh, and talking about it. And you said you wanted you wanted to, to, to bring a very youthful side to the Justice Society, and uh, and I, 
I knew from our meeting that if you would have me, I mean, it would just, it would be the, the, the greatest, single greatest, most fun, awesome experience of my life, and that's exactly what it was. Um, without diving too much into Adam Smasher, I mean, if you've read the comic books, you know he comes from a, a pedigree of, of heroism, heroism and uh, a little bit of villainy, and that's a, it's, a, it's a complicated past. Um, but, but with that, he really wants to prove himself as a hero. I, I, I look at Adam Smasher and Albert, and I can say, this is a, a young kid that wants to find his way in life. Um, and what I, what I really love about our dynamic, as well, Q, Q's uh, dynamic and, and mine, is you usually see superheroes when they are already their fully formed version of themselves. And in this film, you really get to see two metahumans figure out what being a superhero is. And uh, so, uh, you know, that's a little bit about Adam Smash. <laughs> I don't want to get too much, but it's exciting and it's cool, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. And can you tell everybody about that dynamic between Cyclone and Adam Smasher and what it is like for you bringing Cyclone to the big screen? Yeah, um, hey y'all. <laughs> um, well, like, I think Noah, like, said it perfectly, honestly. Like, it's, we're two young people, like, also just, like, experiencing, like, our youth and trying to figure out who we are as people. And then, like, we're thrown into this mix of also utilizing our powers and trying to decide where we exert our energy and, and our powers and, and how we can identify with them more. Um, and so that's like a journey in and of itself. And I think for me, like playing Cyclone, I mean, to be honest, it's like the biggest honor of my life, like so far. Um, I'm like getting choked up, sorry. Um, this, the character is so, like, she's so unique, and in a way, I'm just very, like, protective, like, over her, because there's just, like, this light that, like, she has, and just, in and of itself, like, her journey of, like, the way she got her powers and the way that she's choosing to experience them is just, like, so powerful, and to share that experience with Noah, you know, it's just, like, it's... I don't know, it's just the biggest honor. So, yeah, thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Like, Thank you. You know, let me, let, me, let me just say this. You know, in, when you sit and you listen to Quintessa uh, talk about Cyclone and Noah talk about, you know, Adam Smasher, of course, all this talk about Hawkman, um, and Pierce Ross, of course, sends his love. Uh, on set, he is here in spirit. Fate is here in spirit. But so for me, uh, I got to just say, what a uh, proud honoring moment for me just to watch these guys walk on set for the first time in full costume and there is our Hawkman who was born to play Hawkman. Here comes Adam Smasher, born to play Adam Smasher and with Quintessa, when they walked on set and it was almost like it all came together and you just hear that passion in her voice and everyone has that same passion and you know I, it, it, I think it's reflective of the movie we made with Black Adam and this idea that Maybe we can usher in a new era in the DC universe. Maybe it's time to feel a little bit of shift and get in there and disrupt things a little bit. Listen to the fans, which is the most important thing. And speaking of listening to the fans, I think we've got time for one audience.